And now it's time for Picture. <laughs> hey guys, Keith Carty uh, with BA Mufflers. Uh, just uh, thought it'd be a nice to help guys out uh, figuring out whether or not they need a single exhaust or a dual exhaust. Uh, we specialize in uh, Toyota Tundra exhaust systems, specifically the 5.7 liter Tundra. And um, I get asked all the time, all day long, what would be better, single exhaust or dual exhaust? And um, the answer is simple. It's a, it starts with another question. Um, are you going to be uh, putting a supercharger on the truck? Or are you going to be putting long tube headers on the truck? Um, if you're doing a supercharger, then the exhaust just doesn't matter. Uh, no matter what you do to that exhaust system, even if you purposely screw it up or make the best system in the world, you're going to uh, still make the same amount of horsepower. It's all based on how much air can that supercharger put into the engine and then uh, the, uh, the uh, fuel is injected, hopefully at the appropriate amount in order to keep the engine from blowing up. That's a different story. And then uh, as far as headers, uh, if you're running long tube headers, you want to run a dual three inch exhaust, you will gain 49 horsepower, 89 foot pounds of torque. Um, but then that brings us to 99.9% of Tundra owners who will not be running headers or a supercharger. They're going to be having the stock exhaust manifolds, the stock Kelly converters, and uh, they just want to make a slight improvement on their truck as far as horsepower, torque, and fuel economy. And then um, obviously as a side effect, they want to have that great sound when they step on the gas and they want it to sound stock when they're cruising down the highway at 65 miles an hour. And um, that's, uh, that's what brings us into dual exhaust or single exhaust. If, um, if you want to actually uh, have the best low end torque possible and not lose any horsepower or anything else, have only gains, you want to go with a single exhaust. And here's why. Um, our stock exhaust manifolds from Toyota, they are not the most restrictive thing in the world. Obviously there's much worse designs. However, in order for the variable valve timing to work correctly, Toyota had to use some major creativity is a nice way of putting it. Um, we can actually see some of this creativity here in the stock midpipe. This is the part that bolts onto the stock exhaust manifold. And if you'll notice, we're talking a two inch inlet right here and it's double walled. So if you look under your truck, it looks like you've got extremely big mid pipes uh, because on the outside you can't even put your fingers around it. But if you cut open the mid pipes and look real closely inside, you can see that it's double walled and that double wall tubing on the inside, I've actually measured it, it's two inch in diameter. And it goes throughout most of the mid pipe section. You can see we did a cut out here and there's two inch hidden inside there as well. The reason Toyota does this is because they use a technology called variable valve timing with intelligence or VVTI. This VVTI uh, comes on at a very low RPM. Uh, normally when you would put on a, uh, install a camshaft or a cam profile in an engine that has a whole bunch of what's called valve overlap, uh, that would normally uh, give you a power band beginning at 3,500 to 4,000 RPM. On the Tundra, they activate the variable valve timing at around 1,500 RPM, so that when you're cruising down the highway at 65 miles an hour, you're in variable valve timing mode. <clears throat> Without the proper scavenging at this RPM, you're gonna get a thing called reversion. You're looking for scavenging, not reversion. Reversion is the opposite of scavenging, where the exhaust charge actually goes up into the cylinder and pushes the intake charge back up out of the cylinder. And that's why uh, we have this little tiny exhaust system on behind a 381 horsepower engine. And um, so in order to um, uh, work with this system, um, what I've discovered is that Toyota used not only creativity in the, in the uh, exhaust manifolds and the mid pipes, but they also used creativity in their tailpipe. If you look at that tailpipe, it's two and three quarter inch diameter, which doesn't exist. You cannot buy two and three quarter inch pipe unless it's a special order, 
Well, the Toyota Tundra comes with a two and three quarter inch single tailpipe stainless steel mandrel bent. It doesn't get any better than this. And, um, and it's an oddball size. So here at BA Mufflers, what we do, as opposed to trying to re-engineer uh, what uh, Toyota has done, we decided that we're gonna work with what they have done. And we're gonna fix the part where their hands were tied, meaning the muffler. Uh, the muffler is the restriction. In order to make a muffler that can pass uh, 55 mile an hour drive-by standards uh, with the federal government, and be in the price range that the accounting department at Toyota says they had to be within, it had to be a restrictive muffler. And that's why our um, system uh, doesn't change the stock tailpipe, it doesn't change the stock mounting flanges, everything remains uh, as close to stock as possible, yet we just remove the, the stock restrictive muffler. There's a question. Awesome. Yeah. I'm running 12 inch mufflers with no rear tabs and two dual in all the way back. Low end loss is kind of huge. How do I get that low end torque back? So the question is, I'm running your 12 inch mufflers with no rear cats and true duals all the way back. Low end torque loss is kind of huge. How do I get that low end torque back? So I'd have to see the rest of the system, but I'm assuming that it's a dual two inch system. Um, a good, a real easy way, I guess you could say, would be to, to run dual, uh, I'm sorry, to run an X-pipe uh, between the cats and the mufflers. Um, you want to have a properly built X-pipe, um, so not one of those stamped out Magnaflow X-pipe. It needs to be, and I'm sorry to drop names, any, any stamped out X-pipe, uh, uh, Magnaflow makes great stuff, but their X-pipe that's stamped out, I would not use that. You want to use a real X-pipe where it's two banks of exhaust that flow together and are allowed to combine together, but they're not forcing the two banks of exhaust together like a big chamber. And that's what the stamped out X-pipes do. Um, also, take a look at the pipe diameters. If it's bigger than two and a half inch, in any section of it more than about a foot, foot and a half long, then that's going to um, cause a huge uh, decrease in low-end torque as well. Hey, so I was talking about um, the, um, I know, I know, I need your girl's help. <laughs> the um, uh, scavenging and single exhaust stock tailpipe. Which Just like one? pick up where I left off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or ask them for questions. One and a half more minutes. That's it? Yeah, tell them. You got one and a half more minutes to ask questions. One and a half more minutes, and we are not live anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, um, to get back to the question, single exhaust versus dual exhaust, the stock uh, two and three quarter inch tailpipe is what you wanna use if you're using your stock mid pipes and your stock um, exhaust manifolds. Um, the, uh, the Toyota engineers knew what they were doing when they sized everything. They just had their hands tied when it came to um, uh, what type of muffler they created. The muffler had to uh, meet uh, the 55 mile an hour drive-by standard by the federal government and they had to meet um, the uh, uh, accountant's department in Toyota, their, their price uh, point. Uh, less than a minute left. Yeah, yeah, bully dog, talk about the bully dog. You can do that. Yeah, yeah. You got 45 seconds. That's it, it's been 10 minutes already? Yeah, talk about the bully dog, you're live still. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the bully dog does is it uh, actually uh, helps with the fuel curve, it actually pulls, um, pulls fuel. These trucks are pig rich at full throttle. I actually have an AFR gauge in both of my trucks to, uh, to see this. Um, you actually get a full point leaner or more, um, but still you're safe at full throttle. And then uh, the Bully Dog also adds um, timing um, and then it also um, changes the curve on the variable valve timing when it, when it kicks on. So um, the Bully Dog actually um, does help um, I get a lot of reports from customers showing uh, gains of uh, not only horsepower and torque, you can actually feel it, as well as fuel economy. Um, and I have actually tested the systems, and I can attest they do work. Um, there's uh, certain glitches with anything Tundra, 
Um, but I, I work closely with the customer and with Bully Dog to resolve any issues with anybody um, as far as uh, installation and uh, drivability issues, things like that. Um, but uh, for the most part, uh, the Bully Dog works fantastic. And uh, we actually have a tune that Bully Dog wrote specifically for us and our full race system on the 5.7 liter Tundras also. Um, and I can actually ask, answer specific questions on that too. And then since it's been 10 minutes already somehow, yeah. I will um, close out on the single versus dual. Um, single exhaust, if you are naturally aspirated and have the stock exhaust manifolds and always run your cats, there's no benefit to removing them. They just lose low and torque for no reason to make your truck stink. And then um, uh, dual exhaust, if you're running long tube headers and still, again, run your cats. And then um, if you're supercharged, run whatever you brung because it's going to work no matter what. You can, you can basically do whatever you want to do, make it the best in the world, or you, you make it a completely a, a huge failure and your truck's going to still make the same horsepower. So that's it for BAM Chat today. Um, I appreciate all the questions and uh, until next time, I'll see you then.